Does it work for you, Eric, to share the screen? Working on it. Okay. So maybe in the meantime, I can start with the short introduction. Uh, my name is Jon Andersson, and I'm the executive director at Wikimedia Sverige. And uh, I will initially give you a short introduction about the, the content partnership hub and what it's all about. Um, and then I will hand over to Eric, who will be talking a little bit about the help desk, a specific part of the, the content partnership hub that we're developing. And finally, we will have a short workshop section, uh, which will be led by my colleague, Josefine Helmut Larsson, uh, where we will be discussing you know, how to get involved, both in if you want to ask questions and if you want to uh, support the help desk and be part of that with a part of being one of the experts helping out or one of the organizations supporting. So, but let's get started. Um, we want to say, you know, we want to keep this introduction very short and make sure that we have a lot, enough time to, for you guys to, to be part of the discussion. So, but as you might know, the Wikimedia movement has worked very hard to figure out how we can improve our global impact by 2030. And over the last few years, we have developed a number of strategic recommendations. And these recomm recommendations, they are intended to kind of guide the movement's work and the investments that we will be doing in the coming years. And one important change that will take place in the next eight years or so is that the movement will establish a number of so-called hubs. And the idea is that these hubs will help to make the Wikimedia movement more diversified and to ensure equity in decision-making. And it's important to note that no such hubs exist at this time. And the idea here is that we will start experimenting and see what these hubs could and should be doing and how they should be organized. Wikimedia Sverige, we're working on establishing a thematic hub around content partnerships in the coming years. And we wanna do this in partnership with other Wikimedia organizations. Um, and we want to, together with them, we want to provide a number of services to Wikimedia affiliates and volunteers across the world so they can establish more and better partnerships with content owners. For example, we can talk about, uh, you know, bringing digitized content that will be scanned material from museums or universities to the Wikimedia platforms. And the main idea with the Content Partnership Hub is that there is an enormous amount of knowledge. I mean, there's information and knowledge that we want to gather from across the world, from across organizations in the form of, for example, media files and data that will be super valuable to add to the Wikimedia platforms. And that our, you know, partner organizations, they hold the key to this. But we also know that the available capacities and capabilities, they are limiting what Wikimedia organizations and volunteers are able to do. You know, for example, how do you form a strong partnership with an organization? How do you upload media or data or support the organizations themselves to do it? How do you make sure that the material is added to Wikipedia articles and otherwise being reused? And these are all very difficult tasks. The Content Partnership Hub, we hope will provide kind of organizational support and a bit of the missing infrastructure that is needed to make these partnerships more frequent and successful. Uh, the Wikimedia movement has a huge amount of experience working with partners and the content partnership hub will not be replacing work done by others. Um, and, but instead it will, the intention is that it will be directed and answered to the needs of the Wikimedia, kind of filling the missing gaps, the missing puzzle pieces. And we believe that more collaboration and coordination between Wikimedia organization can be achieved if we decide to invest in it and that the hub can be a vehicle to do just that. We also believe that providing technical and other expertise um, and other type of support will allow more affiliates and volunteers in the movement to get started with content partnerships. For example, we could provide staff time for, from our developers to help a new Wikimedia user group upload images from a national museum that they've partnered with. So we wanna help, try to help um, unique and valuable content from across the world to get online. Next slide, please. We, we already started a, a number of discussions, uh, you know, what type of support will be needed, what, what, the, uh, what the hub could be working on. Um, and we also conducted a needs assessment. And that intention here was not just to have discussions with the people we know, but to actually reach out to people and learn from people from across the movement, uh, what kind of stuff they would need help with and what would be valuable for them to get support with. And we identified five areas uh, where our team could make a valuable contribution with rather limited resources currently, and that we could be starting the work in the near future. So to give a couple of examples, this includes capacity building, where we try to find ways to support new staff and volunteers to kind of effectively work with content partnerships. For example, to you know, provide better documentation or learning materials or to support a knowledge exchange. And later today, my colleague Yusufin Hellert Larsson will give a presentation about our, an exchange program we're developing, which is called the Grand Tour of Wikimedia. So please listen into that presentation as well. Uh, we also need to see, you know, how providing software that is actually working all the time and, and you know that that um, can really lower the pressure for people. 
so that people that want to work on uploading media files or data can do that in an efficient way. And for this, software development is an important uh, part of it. And we are supporting volunteers developers um, on their work. And we're also dedicating staff time to improve strategically important tools. Um, our colleague, Sandra Falconier, she will be having a workshop later today as well, uh, around lunch here at 12 o'clock, um, on what type of support is most valuable for volunteer developers that are creating and maintaining these important tools. Um, another example is international partnerships, that we have a lot of contacts within the UN agencies and other intergovernmental organizations. And these uh, kind of organizations, they have data that is really, uh, you know, of importance for across the world. Um, and they have a global focus and they want to have partnerships across the world with different local organizations. But there's a lot of work to form good relationships and partner with them and to make the content available through the media platforms. And we think we can help with that. Um, but this today, we're going to focus on the help desk um, and I will hand over to Eric to tell a little bit more in detail about that work. Thank you. Thanks, John, and uh, thanks for giving me the word. Um, I will try to share the slide and talk at the same time as best as I can. Um, but as just as John, I'm working for the Swedish Wikimedia chapter, Wikimedia Sverige, uh, and I'm working a lot with the rest of the team for the Content Partnerships Hub. And uh, one, I think, vital and important part of the hub, as John mentioned, is the help desk idea. And when we did the needs assessment that John mentioned, a lot of Wikimedians reached out and requested to get practical help. Uh, practical help, for example, when it comes to making content, part, uh, content from partners available on the Wikimedia platforms. And as a solution to this uh, request for practical help, we decided to develop and launch a help desk. Uh, and the idea behind the help desk, I'd say, is to be a relatively reactive support function. Uh, there's a need for, from someone in the movement, uh, an affiliate or a volunteer, and the help desk team can, uh, can provide the support that this affiliate or volunteer requests. Uh, and this support can be in pretty much any part of the journey so to say uh, it can be you know from the very early steps how do you do, how do you make advocacy for free licenses how do you create partnerships with uh, glam institutions or whatever it could be uh, but leading towards the end goal of making content available on the wikimedia platforms through for example batch uploads and and so on um, and it is reactive in the sense that it will respond to the needs of the movement uh, it's not something that we decide and prioritize for here from, from Sweden or from the Global uh, Content Partnerships Hubs team, uh, but it's an effort to try to involve the entire movement and, and build capacity and experience when it comes to working with content partnerships in the movement. I will uh, elaborate a bit more on a few, I think, vital parts of the help desk that will make this possible, such as the expert committee later on. But first, I want to uh, spend a few moments to discuss uh, and, and give a few of the early ideas we have on how the help desk process will actually work. Um, so like uh, a, a very important goal for us when we are, have been uh, trying to develop the help desk, um, help desk function is to keep the barriers really low. It should be something that the experienced chapter that wants to have help with the batch upload can get help from, but also from underserved communities, underrepresented communities, and maybe especially, you know, the, the ones that wouldn't be able to do this otherwise. So we're trying to, to find the best way for how to lower the barriers as much as possible. And later on, we will go over into more workshop mode and try to discuss together. And I would really love to hear feedback and ideas from you guys and how, how we can do this in the best possible way. But the, the very basic uh, start of a help desk process would be to send an email to the help desk email. That is helpdesk at wikimedia.se, as you can see on the slide. Uh, we're also, we're also uh, planning on starting monthly uh, office hours for the help desk, uh, where anyone who wants to get support but might find it hard to, to formulate the email in the best way or so on can, can come in and ask for help. And also when it comes to more practical questions. Um, when, when a request has come in through the email, we will have an expert committee that I mentioned previously that will give an initial feedback. Uh, and we will also form working groups uh, where we will invite uh, all parts of the Wikimedia movement to try to help all the requests go in the right direction. Um, And the working groups are still to be organized, uh, but the idea is that they will consist of staff and volunteers that have 
expertise uh, when it comes to exactly this kind of work. Uh, and I think that there's several areas where it's, it's really important to involve all parts of the Wikimedia movement. When it comes to communication, like how do we reach out to all communities and, and inform that there's a help desk that can, uh, that can respond to their needs? Implementation, like how do we actually do the actual uploads using the content uh, and so on and so on. I initially perhaps uh, writing reports, how do we work in the best way to uh, I don't know, decolonize knowledge, which is something I know that a lot of people are passionate about in the movement. Uh, how do we get more books to Wikisource uh, and so on? And I think that we it would be really uh, interesting to form working groups in several different areas to, to try to see how we can bring the help desk as far as possible. Um, and I think that this is also an area where it's really interesting to look into how we can develop join, joint applications for, uh, for funding. Uh, now I mentioned the help desk and the working groups, but I also mentioned the expert committee and I want to want to spend a few moments uh, elaborating on the expert committee because I think that's a really important part of the help desk and we can also today announce that we have an expert committee up and running. Um, which I think is very, really, really great. Um, but the work of the help desk, as I mentioned, will be guided by an expert committee. And the committee is, an is a committee of international GLAM experts that help us prioritize overview uh, the request and develop guidelines for how to prioritize the work. Um, and why did we choose to have an expert committee for the help desk? I think in the very basic sense, it's, it answers to the question how the help desk should prioritize between different requests. Uh, and when, when we have tried to develop the help desk concept, it has been really important for us that uh, it's a global service for the global movement and not only influenced by the minds of a few Northerners. Uh, so the expert committee is a committee of experienced Wikimedians who have done work with content partnerships or GLAM institutions, and that have innovative ideas when it comes to supporting the movements around content partnerships. Uh, we have also developed uh, a portal um, for the for the content partnerships hub on on Meta, and there is also a concept paper for the expert committee and how it works on the portal. So if you want to dig into the details, I would welcome you to uh, to go there. But with the with the helpless process and the expert committee, I think we have most things in order to start to slowly start to do the work. Um, and with with this, I'd also like to. Uh, show you the faces of the great volunteers in the in the expert committee. Uh, Subashish Panigrai, Patricia Diaz, May Hashem, Abbas Mahmoud, Nasima Shabun, Bodhisattva Mandal, Susana Ones, and Geder Porto. A great group of diverse people from across the Wikimedia movement that come in with uh, different backgrounds and different experiences, but all innovative ideas on how to develop the help desk in the best way and how to prioritize between the different requests. Uh, and we have also actually had the first uh, request, pilot request to the help desk that we have started to work on and uh, find uh, the best way to, to handle. So with this in mind, my idea is that we go over to some workshopping parts, but maybe uh, I, I see that there's two questions already in the chat. Should we save all questions for for later, looking at John and Josephine, or should we try to go into them or respond to them in the chat? Maybe we can try to answer them as, uh, in the document as well, or if you have a few minutes at the end, we can, we can round up. With yeah, so so if, if you have questions, save them for the chat, and we'll try to, to do all of them, either respond to them in the chat or take them at the end and then go over to actually do some, some uh, workshopping. And with that, I hand over to you, Josephine. Thank you very much. Um, and we will, we want to, um, oh, there we go. Um, we want to divide you into two groups now. And that comes from where you see that your um, knowledge or your understanding or your role in the movement is. So one group will focus on uh, you that want support 
uh, want to get support from the help desk. And the other group is if you have uh, capacity, et cetera, to give support through the help desk. Because, yeah, as we've heard, uh, we uh, or the expert committee won't do uh, the actual help um, because that's also spread out through the movement. So we will, uh, I will share the link uh, to the etherpad again, and this will be used as documentation because um, if you scroll down there, you will see questions for discussion. And group room one, that is uh, if you want to get support, thoughts on how you can make use of the help desk. And there, two questions will be discussed. The first one is uh, the draft process and if that would work for you or how it could be improved. And the second qu uh, question is how do we make it easy for you to understand what help or support you can receive? Um, and also, how do we communicate? Um, those are those are linked, of course, but also to reach underrepresented uh, groups or new people. Uh, so how can other people that isn't in the core or get um, uh, get updates today? Um, how will they be reached through the help desk? In the second group, group number two, uh, there will be discussions on how to contribute to the help desk. And then the first question is, in what way do you think your organization could support the help desk? Uh, which, uh, what experiences, competences and resources do you have that uh, could help affiliates or volunteers um, that would like to develop partnerships uh, and where media and or data can be shared on our platforms? And the second question is, what would you need to be able to participate in the help desk? For example, formal agreements, funding staff time, a peer network, project management. Um, and there you can specify it if it's a need to have or a nice to have. So group number one, you will be able to join uh, if you want to make help use of the help desk. And group number two, if you will contribute to the help desk. So then I would need some help um, to start two breakout rooms. And I see that we uh, already have them. Great. Uh, thank you, Joel. Um, so group one, room one is group one. Uh, and there Eric will be uh, to guide you through those questions and myself as well. And in room two, John will lead the discussions. So if you open breakout rooms, um in uh, at the lower part of the zoom window you can be able to join room one or room two and i encourage you to do that right now so please join where you think you're um, suited to be uh yes we are coming back after the breakout breakout um five uh, minutes before closing So please take a part in the whichever breakout room you would like to attend. Room one is if you would like to um, receive help from the help desk. And room two is if you would like to uh, give help through the help desk. I see there are a lot of people still in this space, uh, but please uh, join. Yes, room one is give help and room two, no, uh, room room one is if you want to receive help, um, uh, and room two is if you uh, will contribute. 
So if you feel like you want to start a partnership, uh, but you don't really know how to, or if you have a partner uh, with lots of data and you need help in helping them upload them, um, then you go to, or other things like that, then you go to room one. And if you have a lot of experience in partnerships or data uploads or strategic data, um, and would like to share that knowledge with other partners, then you go to room two. Great, so I see there are still quite a lot of people in this main space. You can open the breakout rooms um, in the lower part of the Zoom window, and then you can uh, then you can join breakout room one is if you would like to make use of the help desk, and room two is if you would like to contribute through the help desk. So we are pre uh, currently into breakout sessions uh, where we discuss the help desk uh, concerning content partnerships. Uh, so if you would like to um, join in a content partnership um, and uh, or have experience in, in content partnerships, we have two different rooms for you. And now we will also distribute you through these uh, to, to these different rooms. Uh, room one is if you would like to um, get help from the help desk, and room two is if you already have um, experience and would like to share them through the help desk. So we are placing you in different rooms right now uh, so that at least you can listen into those discussions. So we will divide you into different breakout rooms where you can join uh, and accept the, uh, the invitation to join um, because we won't be talking here in the main space for 10 more minutes. And that's why we're um, inviting you to participate in the group discussions in the breakout rooms. And I will just briefly check into uh, those groups now just to see how the discussions are there and I will be back shortly uh, into this main space.
um, uh, a tool or a, an upcoming or an institution, we can say, where you can uh, gain help in content partnerships if you would like to um, cooperate with a partner around getting their content up to our platforms. And in uh, group uh, one, breakout room one, uh, we are discussing if you would like to uh, get help from the help desk. And in uh, breakout room two, we are discussing if you uh, have experience or knowledge that can be shared through the help desk and how that can be made. So I encourage you to join uh, one of the breakout rooms, uh, either if you would like to receive help through the help desk or if you would like to contribute to others um, wanting and needing the help through the help desk. Uh, because we know there is a lot of experience um, in the movement that uh, will be needed in this um, in this hub work that we are trying to establish, the content partnership hub. And I will just briefly check into uh, one of the breakout rooms, and then I will be back here again um, as we will round up this session. Recording stopped. Hi everyone, um, we are currently divided into uh, two breakout rooms where we are discussing the help desk, the content partnerships hub help desk. Uh, as Wikimedia Sverige is uh, working on coordinating um, a service where you can get help or receive uh, help to others. Um, concerning content partnerships. Recording in progress. So if you would like to establish a content partnership, uh, working with someone you know that has images or movies or data that you would like to get up to our platforms, um, where you can get, um, then you can get help through the help desk in, for example, ex establishing a partnership, uh, 
or um, or um, um, do the actual uploads or whatever help you might need, uh, then the help desk will be there for you um, and getting you in contact with other parties around the world that has that kind of knowledge and can help you. Um, so that's what we're discussing in the two breakout rooms right now, how that help desk can be as uh, good as possible for different kinds of users. Uh, and if you would like to see what is being discussed, then you can take uh, a look in the Etherpad notes. So I'm posting them there again. And we are just about to um, to uh, get everyone back. So we can close the breakout rooms now. So that everyone will come back to this main space. Great. So we, we, we will be welcoming people back. Uh, there we go. People returning from the breakout rooms. I guess people are discussing things um, still, but we will hope, we hope they will. Yeah, now they're closed. 35 seconds and counting. Soon they won't have a choice, but we'll have to return. I listened into both of the uh, breakout uh, rooms and uh, there were interesting talks and, and discussions in both of them regarding the help desk. Great, now the last group is thrown back into this main space as well. Thank you very much for your, um, all of your comments and um, questions, and we will definitely look into this. Erik, uh, would you like to uh, say a few final words, or John, uh, who's also back now, I see? You want to say that? Final words, John. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for, for coming today uh, and joining the discussion. Uh, in our group, we had a wonderful discussion going and, and we were broke up, uh, this broke up way too early. I would have loved to continue the conversation for another half an hour, getting everybody the opportunity to, to suggest their thoughts and ideas. So, but for the ones that didn't have the time to, to talk, uh, please add uh, your thoughts into documents. If you have other people that you think should, uh, you know, ha might have good ideas or, or things that they, I want to share. Uh, please share this this note document and ask them to you know answer the questions asynchronously if that's possible. Uh, and I see questions in the chat here. Uh, perhaps arrange another session after Wikimania. Absolutely, um, that is definitely part of the the next steps here. Uh, both to around you know what the working groups will be doing and how they will be structured, um, because we we we're still in the kind of conceptual conceptualizing phase of that. Um, we have the expert group up and uh, expert committee up and running, but um, now we want more people to join the work uh, when we have a kind of a better understanding how much it actually takes because we've done the kind of first test run now uh, with the first request um, and you know so we, we know what we're going to be asking all of you to join. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of the next step. Eric, do you want to add something to that? No, I think that's a good summary. And uh, as I mentioned in the in the very brief presentation, the help desk is up and running. We have done the first like kind of pilot case. So please feel free to reach out if you have requests that you want to have support with, or if you know other people, help spread the word. We will do a lot of more and more communication, uh, but it would be really great to have your help. And if you have any questions or want to have know, continued meetings and conversations with us, feel free to reach out uh, either at helpdesk at wikimedia.se or to 
John or me or Josephine directly. Yeah. And if you have something you want help with now already, even though the working groups are not up and running, we have dedicated, you know, staff time for Wikimedia Sweden staff. Uh, so we are available to help already now if there's something that we you think we could have some insights or help with the practicalities that uh, you feel, you know, would be valuable to get support around. Um, so don't, don't don't hesitate, don't wait for, for all the working groups to be up and running. We want to get this started. We want to try and uh, do some trial and error already now. So that's happening in parallel. So please, please reach out to us. Thank you.